Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're going to talk about MOLIN, trading under the ticker symbol MULN. MOLIN is a very exciting and interesting stock to cover because of its high volatility providing opportunities and the ongoing projects that may fuel the speculations even further. At the same time, it's a company that has a hard time proving to the market that its relevance is for the long term and not just the short term speculation. In this video, we will go through the latest fundamentals, the price actions, and my analysis, as well as my recommendation to hopefully help you make the best decision possible. If you appreciate my content, please consider to drop a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Also, please check out the links down in the description, as every help is greatly appreciated. Molen stock has been trading sideways lately, and there's a good reason for that. The recent headlines from Molen have been a mix of positive and negative news. It seems like these announcements have actually cancelled each other out, leaving investors uncertain about the company's direction and outlook. Because you see, on one hand, the positive headlines indicate a lot of progress for the EV manufacturer and that it might attract potential buyers. But on the other hand, the negative headlines once again, kind of highlight the company's existing issues. So let's, let's dig deeper a little bit and uncover what's actually going on. So in early July, Molen made a big announcement about 25 million shares repurchasing plan. Initially, when investors saw this, they thought that, well, you know, this is a positive move. And then Molen surged by almost 200%. But... This momentum really didn't last that long, and nowadays the stock began to fall back once again. So it appears that investors are now having the same kind of concerns in general than what we've been discussing. Because after taking a closer look, it seems like those repurchasing may not be that bullish, uh, you know, in terms of a news. So with the hype around the share repurchasing plan fading, we also should shift our focus to other news as well. For example, the company recently unveiled a promotional tour about its EV lineup and the introduction to Power Up, a pop, like a, a mobile EV charging truck. These announcements may sound great, but unfortunately, they also come with their dose of not so great news. Bolin has been facing a setback in its objective to develop vehicles with greater range. The termination of Molen Advanced Technology Operations joint venture is such a significant step back. And the seemingly positive developments of promotional tour and the new vehicle launch could also turn out to be like almost negative news in the long run. It sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but essentially, while the promotional tour might boost the reservations and sales in the initial timeline, it also raises concerns about the ongoing cash crunch and its ability to even sustain those existing production demand. Additionally, the company's continuous need for capital also raises like a lot of questions regarding further dilutions in the future. So, it's clear that Molen stock no longer enjoys like the same meme fueled hype that it had back in 2021 and even in 22. So it's essential to remain very vigilant and to separate the hype from the reality. The recent so called good news surrounding Molen sometimes may be just a trap in order to get people in. But that's just that, in my mind, depends on you know on anyone and everyone so we may not have the same opinion about molen and that's okay that's what makes a market but i would say that generally speaking we got to be careful about molen going forward now let's take a look at the technicals the trading volume of molen recently has been around 413 million shares versus the average of around 500 million shares over the previous 52 weeks period, the price fluctuated between $0.10 cents and $35.
The volume of shares traded tells us how many shares are being bought and sold at any given point. And if the liquidity is strong enough to support a strategy as well as the exit. Because if it's very low, then it's, it might be good enough to support an entry point and to push the stock price around. But when it comes to exit plan, then it may not be that good. And when we compare the current volume against the average volume, I would say that whatever momentum Molin enjoyed not that long ago is now fading away. The market cap of Molin is currently around $24 million versus an enterprise value of $17.3 million. As we compare the current price to the historical price fluctuations, the stock is 56% higher than the one month low, 56% higher than the three month low, and 56% higher than the 52 weeks low. On the options market, which gives us a hint about market sentiment and where the stock price is likely going to head next, the implied volatility is 441% versus a historical volatility of 281%. Put call volume ratio is around 3%. It is normal for many stocks to have a higher put option volume than what they truly deserve. So in this case, it means that almost everyone believes that Molin is going to go higher. The most recent volume of options traded is 33,000 contracts a day versus the 30-day average of 50,000. Open interest volume is around 1.2 million contracts versus the 30-day average of 1 million contracts. Regarding the shareholder structure, institutional shareholders own 150% of the current outstanding float likely as a result of the short selling, because at this current point, I highly doubt that there's anyone who wants to own Molin in the long term as an investment, unless they hold Molin as like a marginal potential moonshot. The current short interest is around 17% of the total float, 57% of the transactions coming out of the dark pools. So typically, if the short interest is around 15% or more, then there's a there's like an argument or there's a case about the fact that oh we might be dealing with concerted shorting operations but not in this case i think that it's just a question of enough people individually believe that molen is going to go down and this is why we're having 17% of the shorts uh, of like short interest molen is a publicly traded company operating in the ev sector and is listed on the NASDAQ. One of the key factors that sets Molin apart is its focus on developing long-range electric vehicles. The company's flagship project, I was going to say product, but it's really project, is the M115, is a long-range electric truck with a range of around 500 miles. This is significantly more than the range of most other EV companies currently on the market making it an attractive option for commercial fleets and logistics companies. Another differentiator is that it focuses on heavy-duty electric vehicles. They have a line of buses and trucks, which are designed to handle heavy loads and perform demanding work. This is a unique offering in the EV market, where most other companies are focused on developing cars and light-duty vehicles. The company invests in battery technology as well, as they develop a somewhat proprietary battery management system, helping companies to have longer range and faster charging time. In terms of financial performance though, the company has been having a hard time generating income, as they don't have any significant revenue streams before the distribution contract in Europe for the iGo vehicles. These vehicles should generate some income and should be reflected in the 2023 financial reports. In terms of the long-term price actions, despite the recent upward momentums, the company has been having a mostly bearish trend over the past five years, having traded between $5 to $10 for years before coming back to the current levels. What this means is that Molin has been hard hit by the ongoing stock market downfall, and a lot of people have realized that at the end of the day, some companies are just empty shells, or that they have very weak fundamentals. Now, for a company like this, 
I would say that a lot of investors wouldn't trust it with long-term capital investment, but they may still come back for some quick swings. So I also want to say that things can always change in the industry. So it's not because nowadays it's not worth investing in Molin or that you shouldn't invest in Molin, but this will still be the case for a few years down the road. The online communities have been initially skeptical about Molin regarding its capacity to survive beyond the medium term, if there is no more EV hype to fuel its stock price and to provide liquidity. The general mood has since then transformed into the high speaker of whatever the company announces. Of course, nowadays people are a bit smarter than this, and I would say that whatever happens with Molin in real terms would become a reason to like or to hate it. Now, basically, as far as their online footprint is concerned, the biggest factor is the price action. And this will give people enough motivation or not to have a position in Molin. Other factors have sometimes served as a pretext to buy its shares, such as the ongoing IGO distribution or the potential you know, major clients and so on. On top of that, the macroeconomic trend within the sector have been under serious pressure due to several reasons, including the increase of the interest rates, the capital flight from growth stocks to other options, the conflicts around the world, the supply chain issues, the expectation of a recession. Another factor to look at is how the flagship company of the sector Tesla has been doing. The EV sector is a relatively new industry with much of its stolen development. Very often, people determine whether they should purchase EV stocks based on whether Tesla is performing strongly. The idea is to profit from a sector-wide gravy train pulled by Tesla with all the other ones behind it. Of course, Molin doesn't always follow this trend because it's not really a fully-fledged EV company. A lot of people simply perceive it as a hustling EV shell. As this has played in its favor before, it is also the reason why some people believe that it's only good for trading and not really for investing. With that being said, let's also take a look at the company's financials. The company's cash balance has decreased somewhat, but for now, it is not a major issue as the reserves remain at a decent level. The reason why cash balance is relevant to examine is because cash is used not only to finance the operations, but to satisfy short-term obligations. Without it, the company would technically go into bankruptcy with the possibility of liquidation. So to prop up the cash positions, the company has to bring money by either issuing debt, selling the equity, or to raise capital by selling assets. The liabilities of Molin has provided some encouragement as it recently reduced the liabilities by $13 million in an announcement, but it didn't really have the effect it wished that it's going to have because during the same period of time, the stock price fell from $0.55 cents to below 30 The price movement shows that, although it is a good news, it didn't really carry much weight in front of purely stock-related factors. Despite the price action downturn, I believe that it is encouraging to see the liabilities going down as it decreases the solvency risks and reduces an amount of cash outflows by contract. The last element to look at would be the profitability. It's very simple. They don't have any profitability as of yet because all they have seems to be expenses. They should have some money coming in with the ICO distribution, but even then, we will have to wait and see whether this is going to be the case in the financial reporting. Overall, the financials show us that the company wants to stay afloat. This is its intention. But can it really do that is something that is not always up to itself. It's also up to the shareholders. Now, regarding the shareholders, they're mostly retail, with some significant institutional shareholders like BlackRock, and their number for a period of time has been increasing. But I don't believe that this is significant enough for me to change my view that Molin is mostly for trading and short-term trading on that. Now, at the same time, the lack of significant institutional participation also means that there is very little trust from the institutional side because they don't believe that this company really means business. They might only be here 
the hustle around with equity money. One key behavioral difference between institutional and retail shareholders is the investment outlook. They can afford to wait longer, and they also participate more actively in the company's operations. These are the key differences between the shareholders coming from the institutional side and the retails. Speaking of the retail shareholders, the actual catalyst for Molen is the significant size of short positions. The reason why it is relevant is because it may trigger what we call a short squeeze. So currently there are around 40 million shares been shorted against Molen, the vast majority of them outside of public exchanges. So therefore we can say that they come from the institutional side. And the potential for a short squeeze is also significant in that sense because this is a phenomenon observed when traders decide to collectively buy up the price and force those who have the short positions to redeem their positions, essentially buying back their shares. The reason why they may have to do this is because the positions are borrowed from brokers and the longer it drags on, the more financial fees they would have to pay while risking infinite losses. The redemption acts as a purchase in the open market, which may push the stock price even higher. Now, it's important to note that the short interest is not a guarantee on the short squeeze, but nevertheless, it can be a significant metric to look at as far as finding what is the reason why people are interested in buying a specific stock when fundamentally things aren't necessarily looking good. It's also worth considering that the short sellers may have valid reasons for their bearish sentiment to begin with. My recommendation for Molen is to either stand on the side because of the volatility that it has, which is very high, or to start buying for the short-term speculation only. And this, if your risk appetite matches with the profile of Molen, which is a short-term speculative position for the time being. I would recommend to commit between 0.5 to 1% of your portfolio in Molen, and to split the allocation in batches of 20% at a time every time you make a purchase over the next three months. 